Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at the iconic scene from Star Wars and Luke Skywalker looking into the night skies of Tatooine. Now you may already know or you may have heard before that we've discovered um, a star system out there known as Kepler-47 that could potentially actually have very similar night skies to this. There is a star that's very similar to our sun and there's a red dwarf that is about 35% the mass of our sun. This system has been studied quite extensively in the last uh, nine years or so, and we've discovered and confirmed two planets around the system. And this is something that's really rare, because these uh, systems are known as binary systems, and planets around binary uh, systems are known as circumbinary planets. There's a video I made a few years ago where I explained the math behind how difficult it is to maintain a stable orbit in a binary planetary system. Now let me quickly demonstrate this. And this is going to be a very rough demonstration, but here is Kepler-47a and two of the planets we've confirmed. As you can see, one of them is sort of in the habitable zone. The thing is, as soon as I place its partner next to it, which I'm going to place um, somewhere right here. They do have an orbit of about uh, seven days around each other. And these stars are about three and a half billion years old and also approximately 3,300 light years away from us. So they are pretty far away. But watch what happens to the planets that orbit around them as I accelerate time. The actual orbits of these planets, okay, the first one seems to have already been swallowed, um, will not really stay stable. They will most likely um, become really unstable really quick. And uh, the fact that we've discovered two and now three planets in this particular system really surprised the scientists. And more specifically, these three planets are very, very packed, very closely packed next to each other. So the system of Kepler-47 sort of looks like this. Let me try to show it to you using Space Engine. And this is um, a relatively accurate simulation, but not 100% accurate. So we have um, all three planets that in a sense could be called Earth-like. This uh, closest uh, planet orbits the stars every 47 days. The second closest, that's the one that was most recently confirmed and discovered about five to six years ago, um, has an orbit of about 187 days. And the last planet here has an orbit of about 303 days. All three planets are, uh, like I said, Earth-like in a sense, but much larger in size. Anywhere from three times as big in terms of radius to seven times even though the mass seems to be maybe even less than the mass of Earth. So in other words, looking at these planets, we'll discover not a terrestrial planet, but something along the lines of maybe some kind of a gas planet. More specific name for these planets right now is poofy planets, because we don't really have a better name for them and because that kind of describes what they are. These are very large, but not so massive, and very low in density objects that are sort of like clouds, I guess. Their density is even lower than the density of the least dense object in our solar system, which is Saturn. The largest object here, um, its density is about four times less than water. And let me try to demonstrate how all of this would look like if we did this with just planet Earth. So I'm going to um, take all of these objects and show you what they would look like compared to actual Earth. So this is Earth, mass of one Earth, size of one Earth. This right here is same mass. Actually, all four of these are same mass. But this is the least dense of these objects with a density of about 0.26 grams per centimeter cube. And that's an object that becomes dramatically bigger than Earth. And because we think it's most likely made out of some kind of a gas, not really terrestrial at all, possibly doesn't even have any kind of a land to land on or to stand on that is, it's most likely a gas poofy planet, similar to what you see here. So we believe that this is what we've discovered there. And we believe there is or there are three of these planets in this particular system. But what's really strange about them is that all three of these planets are pretty close to each other and they have these unusual poofy uh, compositions. 
And so we can't really explain what's going on in this really strange, very, very unusual system that, first of all, has so many planets so closely packed together, while at the same time being a binary system where stability of planets has always been thought to be very difficult to maintain. And because these planets are um, in a relatively similar inclination to each other and also orbit in a somewhat predictable and somewhat um, stable way, we believe that these planets were here for billions of years in a very similar pattern that we currently observe. In other words, we don't think these planets were born from collisions, we don't think they were um, captured from anywhere, we think that they were born here from a typical protoplanetary disk, just like Earth and other planets in our own solar system. But how they were created and why they're so strange and poofy, and also how they were able to maintain such close distance to each other without colliding with each other, but also have low densities, is really unusual and very difficult for us to explain right now. And the recently confirmed planet also happens to be the largest. It's um, over seven times as big as planet Earth, suggesting that it's also a little bit more massive than Earth. So possibly a new type of a planet and potentially a mechanism that maintains the stability of these planets that we can't really explain just yet. Because like I mentioned before, the simulations we ran here on planet Earth with these binary planets almost always suggest that it's almost impossible to maintain stability in these systems. And having planets that close is even harder. And even the scientists who found this uh, planet and also who confirmed it were super surprised that it was in the location so close to other planets and not somewhere much, much, much farther away. So this particular star system, Kepler-47, is definitely one of the strangest we've discovered so far. It's binary, it has planets, and it has planets we haven't really seen anywhere else. These weird, unusual, poofy planets that may contain materials that we don't really have on planet Earth or in the solar system. So for all we know, these objects are made of something really unique, unusual, and something that doesn't exist in the solar system. Or maybe it's something we just don't understand yet. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences and wants to learn through video games and simulations. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.